You're listening to The Real. The Real. Some Real. With Rachel D. on WATV 1420. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey, Miss BJ. Hey, Miss Rachel. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I am going. I'm doing pretty well. I am so glad this week has went by extremely fast. You know what, guys? We survived the what did we survive? The, the eclipse. Um, the eclipse. I'm gonna yes. say the apocalypse. That's how it felt. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and start this over again. It's your girl Rachel D. Welcome to the real with Rachel D. Yes. Hey, Miss BJ. Hey. I'm still getting to uh, learning things. Today. But to get back to the eclipse, you got a chance to see it, right? I did. Me and my wonderful husband, Orin, both took our time <laughs> to, um, you know, just stand out and look at the eclipse. Let me tell you, as two officials who work for um, our uh, selective library systems, it has been crazy. Yeah, guys, wanting these glasses is just too much, honestly. And we had one lady. You know, have you ever just really fidgeted between wanting to? Speak need to stay professional not just wanting to stay professional but you need to stay professional right however the black woman in you is about to just jump out of your skin oh yeah you gotta hold her back sometimes yes yeah. that is what happened when all right so atlanta pulls public library system decided to do a kickoff of the eclipse viewing and give away some glasses at woodruff park this um, past monday right and um we decided to give away start to give away the glasses at one o'clock right right so one lady, the line, by the way, was forming all around the set. It was oh, yeah. so long. People I believe started it. to line up around 10 a.m. And one lady came in. She was late. The line was already bypassed. And she said, um, why did y'all decide to wait until 1 o'clock to hand out the, the glasses? And now, this real note, there's not a real answer to that that she's going to accept. Right. So we were just like, that's just the time that we designated to hand them out. And she was like, well, wait a minute. The eclipse starts at 1.30, no, 1.06. So you're not going to be able to pass out all the glasses by 1.06 if you start at 1 o'clock. I said, well, ma'am, the eclipse is going to go for a couple hours. Yeah. So it is okay if we, you know, do it at 1. That's just the time we're going to do it. And then she was like, but, 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 what if... People decide to look up at the sky at 106 to look at the eclipse and they don't have their glasses. They're going to mess up their eyesight. Uh, and that is when I'm like, stay professional. Because yeah. in my mind, in my head, I'm like, if you don't get the head away from me with your craziness. Right. I mean, honestly, it was people who didn't have them. And I promise you, they didn't look up in the sky. Exactly. I know she what her is. deal was. She just wanted me to hand her some. because Some she people was just want an argument. I thought that. But I... Uh, buying into it and my mother came downtown to come with me so i appreciate oh, that's nice. my mother. <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and get into some celebrity news um miss bj is something about the 90s past a little bit rappers yeah they've been i mean we've been already inundated with usher in the the newscast i mean news on the news then we got r kelly I mean, and these all seem to be some type of sexual deviant crime yes. that are alleged. And here we come with Mystical, who yet again, I don't know if you guys know, but he had already served six years um, on a rape charge uh, for holding someone against their will. And here he is again um, for a incident that took place October 22nd, 2016 in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, an alleged incident is where it, it was actually at a casino where Mystical was performing on the Legends of Southern Hip Hop tour. Um, police say that he raped another woman, um, and it's considered first degree rape along with another man. You know, I, I can't even pronounce his name. It's Avrion Holman, um, but Holman was arrested in Texas. Both he and Mystical are being held on two million dollar bonds. So um, they're searching for a third person who played a part in this. Her name is Tanisha Wofford. They said she was allegedly trying to strong arm the victim into dropping the charges. Well, going to finish that up, I actually heard that it wasn't that she was trying to strong arm the victim, just that the victim indeed lied. Right. Or was lying to her, according to her name, Tanisha Wilford. Right. Because see, Tanisha Wilford is saying that this is all just 
um, a setup that someone's trying to get after Mystical and his money. But right now, apparently when police did investigate, they figured it was enough evidence to go ahead and place Mystical and Averwane or whoever home is <laughs> to hold up to arrest them. So Wait, Mystical and his money? Mystical has money since when? Mystical actually still has money. He's been performing since he stepped foot out. He's been going around performing, um, doing some headliner shows. So he might not have a lot of money, but he got some money. But did he just serve time in jail for rape already? Okay, so he did go to jail um, for rape, and then he went back to jail for domestic abuse uh, dispute. And so now he's out, and he's actually now back in. So whatever money he had left is probably not much more now. But that's the thing. What is it with these rappers and these rape charges? I don't know. Like, do they not know? Well, I'm sure they do know. I mean, and people will give it up. People like, what's her name, Sharpton? Shanquisha Sharpton, whoever it is. Oh, Quantasia. Quantasia Sharpton. Yes. She'll meet you in the bedroom as long as you disclose your sexual uh, history. Exactly. And then again, like I'm saying, it's alleged rape that Mystical did. We don't know if he did it or not. This could just be another Quantasha, but we don't know. Very, very true. All right, let's skip around real quick since, again, sure. we're talking about 90s artists. R. Kelly. So <laughs> things have started to go downhill for R. Kelly, but I feel like R. Kelly is one of those people he will not, his career won't die. No. It's going to take a slope like it did in the night or the 2000, early 2000s, I think it was, when that um, tape came out of him. Right, right. However, he's back in the media, like he's never left the media, because a 24-year-old woman has come forth, and she said that she did indeed have a sexual relationship with R. Kelly when she was a teen. Yes. Her name is Johanda These Johnson. names, Rachel. <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you, these last two weeks, these names in the, in the, in the media, yeah, Johanda Wilson. Um, she told BuzzFeed that she was 15 and a fan when she met R. Kelly in 2008 outside of a Chicago courtroom while he was on trial for a uh, trial for child pornography. Um, after that, um, they had apparently, allegedly, a sexual relationship. Which, and then what some sources are saying is that she actually broke a non-disclosure agreement to come forward. So she is facing charges due to this. Yeah, and she was uh, getting about $5,000 a month in that agreement. Right. This right here is what bothers me about situations like this. Right. The lack of accountability. I get it. You were 15, 16. You were not thinking properly. Right. That's why whenever I get into those social media arguments with the, with the racists on social media talking about Trayvon and Mike Brown, as if at that age right. you knew that that crap can happen to you or you were so well. No, when you're a teen, you're just as dumb as you've always You're not been. thinking. Exactly. So that I'm not going to accuse her on. But the parents, to me, this right here is just like the parents who still brought their kids over to Michael Jackson's house yeah. after the rape allegation. When I read about Ted Bundy had chicks in the courtroom winking yeah. at him because he's cute. It's like, what is it appealing about these people who are on trial for these crazy charges? Exactly. But moving on, and this kind of circles back a little bit to how I feel about the... Um, I feel about the uh, what do you call it? Bill Cosby part. It's right. like you're taking this money. You're taking these free deals. Yeah. And <laughs> what's what's really interesting is that she was only 16 at the time. Well, she was actually 15. They started having a sexual relationship when she was 16. However, the interesting thing is the age of consent in Illinois is 17 years old. Now, what happened was they are trying to reach the young lady, um, Johanda, so they can get additional comments. Even though she told the publication, she's told everyone that she did sign a non-disclosure agreement, but she felt compelled to come forward with the recent events that's been going on in the, you know, in the media about an abusive sexual cult. Okay, I don't really think she feels. I don't know. I can't really say that she doesn't feel compelled. I mean, because you just lost five thousand dollars a month for however long you're supposed to get it. Right. And but what if there's this little catch here that her, the end of her payment was coming up? That's true because maybe it was only agreed to because this thing, if she was 16 at the time and she is now, um, they say she is a married mother of three now, so um, she's 24. So let's say that it's supposed to end when she's 25. Like that was the agreement. And she still needs some money you know, she's just been sitting back catching those R. Kelly touch me checks. <laughs> Wait, so. do you have your calculator on you? Uh, yes. Yeah. 
calculate, because she's it's almost been 10 years if she was 14 or 15, 16. Calculate 5,000 times 12 times 9. Okay. Okay, so she's gotten close to half a million dollars. Hmm. That sounds about right. Yeah. It sounds like her, her ticket's about to end. Right. And that's why I, I really agree that she's just now coming forward. Welcome, P Money. Welcome. What are you talking about? I've been sitting here the whole time with my hand raised. <laughs> yeah, we have been letting Patrick talk. Sorry. I've been sitting here saying, reclaiming my time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, P Money. We're talking celebrity news. Um, let's move on to this. I love a good clapback. I love a good clap back. <laughs> so you know that Kevin Hart has been in and out of the media as well, like R. Kelly and like Mystical. And this time, it's not so much what he did, it's what his current wife, Aniko, said. And right. What his ex-wife followed up with. So, um, you know, Aniko's pregnant. And with all of the mess that's been going on on social media, when Kevin yeah. Hart allegedly cheating and all that, she wanted to help everybody know, look, we're happy, we're having a baby, we're in love. And so she did post a picture of um, being pregnant, and then she mentioned something. She mentioned that, that this was her lovely husband, and she's been they've been together for eight years, married for one. And that's when the Instagram fact checkers jumped on her case. I wish we had the transcript. We could be, we could be a new phone. I think it was. So, mm -hmm. Wait, what did she say? What did Nico say? Let's see. But it was so interesting because a lot of people, they know of um, that Nico and Kevin Hart got married under, you know, a little, some sketchy, you know. Um, circumstances. Circumstances. But what happened was she really, really put it out there when she started, you know, listing the time so here we have um but let's give Nico too she does have pregnancy brain so she might be a little emotional right now so this is what she said <laughs> okay so you're Nico I'm um, okay I'm a Nico I don't even know how she sounds I am grateful to God every day for putting us together when it's real no love no bond can ever be fake or broken my partner in life my other half that makes me whole, my soulmate. Thank you for always keeping a smile on my face. I love you more every day. Eight years together, one year married, and forever to go. Heartily yours. Happy one anniversary, baby. We made it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That seemed nice. You know, it doesn't seem like it'd be a big deal. So what was interesting, like I said, after she posted that on Instagram, some people were like, oh, congratulations, we're happy for you. But then somebody was like, hold on, um, didn't you, Kevin Hart, just get a divorce from his wife, Tori? And then more and more people, they call them trolls, I call them fact checkers. They started saying, yeah, he just, he didn't divorce his wife until six years ago. And here you are saying y'all been together for eight years. So, um, and then that caused Aniko to kind of get in her feelings and start clapping back at her followers until Tori Hart wanted to come on and say something. Wait, what did Aniko say? Aniko, so she brought Tori in it. Right, so after she got upset that so many people were commenting on her page, Aniko said, well, it's no problem at all. I'm basically immune to it now. She wanted to play the victim and not own up to her wrongdoing as well. She singled me out as the mistress because we stuck, knowing dang well there was other women during their marriage, but I never wrecked any home. That was never the case and people ran with it. Only we know how it really went down. And she did like one of them little smart faces emoji. <laughs> so, um, and then that is when Miss Tori Hart had to step on her Instagram and, and clap back at her royally. All right, so <clears throat> I'm channeling the time I had to speak to my ex's new chick after that time happened. I didn't slap, so that's good. <laughs> All right, so I'm twerk. <clears throat> Aniko, sweetheart, 
Normally I don't feed into this, but when you address me directly, you force my hand to respond or to be made out to a liar. We have made successful strides to become a loving, co-parenting family, but you have now let it open for my character to be questioned. You, Kevin, and I know the truth. I offer this simple solution to your quote-unquote IG comment problems. Either respond truthfully or don't, or don't respond at all. Thank you for considering my advice, Tori. And needless to say, after Tori clapped back, um, she disabled the comments on her page. Ooh, that's right there. That's a sign <laughs> of a guilty heart, the disabling of the comments. Um, a guilty heart that works two ways. Right? Mm. A guilty heart. That was funny, Rachel. Oh, them Good for me. All right, we could do one more before we have to go to a quick music break. Who do you want to address? Do we want to address? I kind of wanted to do Bill Maher. Okay. Can we? So, y'all know Bill just got out of hot water with the n-word yeah now he getting in hot water with the f-word what's the f-word fat <laughs> and i wanted to definitely talk about this because bj is so real mm-hmm. and bj is a big girl not anymore really she she lost half hey. herself except for this booty y'all but her husband's not complaining so right right there but Miss BJ is very just transparent about feelings. And right. so a lot of this I had mixed feelings about because, number one, he is a comedian. He is a comedian. And I feel like now everybody's so sensitive that part of the things that make comedians funny is them pushing the envelope. Right. Is them being honest about stuff. Like when they start talking about, you know, how mama was back in the day, you ain't got no McDonald's money. It's funny because you remember it and right. it's true. And so nowadays everybody's just so sensitive. So yeah. he wasn't really talking about fat people. He was talking more about obese people. Obese. And my thing is, so many people are are so sensitive to this issue. Um, you can't be this, you can't be that without saying something to offend someone. So what he did, um, and I, I think it was a little shade thrown into this article, actually. Because they said he potentially fatally damaged to the obese population. I mean, I don't know. I didn't know that, that you could go on an application and, you know... <laughs> Like it's a, a race, you know, of if anything. I mean, I don't know. Fatally damaged them. Fatally damaged child. What he do? Like some people died. Right. They it's said that like... some people could take those comments and go kill themselves. What were the it. comments? He started kind of doing some uh, below. They called it below the belt fat jokes. But he said, belt. Oh, but <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> but I'm Good just. One. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Um, and it, it was leading to obesity.org. Now everyone knows obesity can range from someone who is like. 400 with 300 pounds plus and true enough and but the thing is america's making money off of obesity right now honestly jenny craig you got what 600 pound life so he was just saying obesity is the main reason that people wear sweatpants in public and among the shaming police your body is perfect just the way it is prone on a gurney so the jokes were to underscore the obesity crisis, but, and I've never heard of this, the Obesity Action Coalition, nearly 60,000 60, members strong, said that mayor's jokes weren't only in bad taste, they were alarming for people who are on the edge of a cliff fighting weight issues. Um, no. I'm sorry, I might be a B-I-T-C-H with this, but this body shaming situation to me goes overboard. Overboard. Like when I hear people say, um, you know, I looked at Barbie and I was like, that's not realistic for a woman. Like that doll doesn't look like me. I mean, it's not supposed, like how do you take stuff like that to heart? Like with me, I'm tall, I used to be skinnier, I used to be model looking. And it did bother me when other women would be like, you know, that's not how real women look. Tyra Banks is not how real women look. Uh, she looks like I do, so what are you trying to say? Right. It's and like you can't try to shame. put down other people to make you feel better and then turn around and feel offended when somebody put you down. My thing is, whoever you are, whatever you are, own the heck out of it. If you big and want to lose weight, lose weight. If you skinny and want to get thick, eat you some greens, some collard greens, little sweet potatoes on the side. I mean, it's just whoever you are, just be happy happy with who you are you can't let somebody's joke or words offend you you cannot wear your heart on your sleeves because if you're unhappy and it hits a nerve that means you truly are happy with who you are point blank period the only person that can really hurt you is yourself people going what's that saying grandma she said they talked about jesus yeah (laughs) you know i'm just saying just like some people were not super offended when bill mark 
made another faux pas, you know, months ago. Yeah. So my thing is, I didn't even know there was an obese, what is an obesity action coalition? coalition. Well, I will say this about comedy. Um, and I, the same thing kind of popped into my head when we were talking a few weeks ago about the situation regarding um, who was a little Duvall and um, yes. the comments he made about the transgender um, or the transgender situation. Um, with comedy, I think that there is, and this is one of the comments that somebody left under that um, post, was that there's a difference between someone being comedic and laughing at ignorance. And I think with comedy, with what you mentioned before about comics are supposed to be cutting edge and supposed to say things that other people don't say, I think that's true, but I think there's a difference between satire, and I haven't heard Bill Maher's comments, so I can't really comment on that, but there's a difference between satirizing a situation and just being mean about it. Right. And I think good comedians know the difference between that, and good comedians know how to how to find that line and to, to, to ride it. That being said, I think that if you tuned into Bill Maher, you pretty much know what you're getting. Yeah. And so I don't really buy the whole gonna knock people off the edge or the ledge. Yeah, comments. over some that's comments. So stupid, but I mean, are we suing McDonald's or anybody who might contribute to their weight? No. You don't in the past. So, I mean, yes, they have. <laughs> the coffee, that's why they have to put on the cups if the coffee is yeah. hot. She got burnt up, supposedly. <laughs> All right, guys, you're listening to The Real with Rachel D. Make sure you keep it here. We have more show coming up for you. But a quick reminder, go on social media, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. Yes. And follow us and show us some, some love coming up. We have a mix by DJ Spence. All right, guys, welcome back to The Real with Rachel D. I think we're on the mic, on the air with DJ Spex. Yeah, yeah. Yo, what's up? We're good. How y'all doing? Us? We're good. Rachel D. Yep. Miss BJ. Hey. P Money. What's up? All right. All right. We got the credit connect in the house. Are the brothers in the house tonight? <sighs> no, my husband didn't come to support me tonight. <laughs> Did you hear that, Pat? My husband. husband. My husband. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's out making money, making us money, so I let him. Yeah. Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. All right, guys, so let's get into Trump talk. Uh, now, what are we going to do once they impeach this man? I mean, he gives us material every single week, tons and tons of it. Well, I think the people who will probably be most affected off top is probably Saturday Night Live. Because <laughs> <laughs> they kill this guy. But, you know, real talk, you know, this this guy, he, he's been showing out again this week and you know, it, it, it's getting to the point here where nothing, he, I mean, anything that he does, it's not even surprising anymore. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you expect to see something he's going to mess up during the day. So this guy's a clown. You know, I saw on Facebook, DJ Specs, that you nominated Charles Barkley, was it, to join the Coon Train? Oh, yes. No, Barkley's been on the train for years. I, what is he You know, he's recently? a lifetime member. That was uh, George <laughs> Foreman. George Foreman, that's what yeah, I meant. Yeah, George Foreman. Light skin ball, close enough. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm kind of at a crossroads today as far as who I'm going to put on the coon train this week. It's either Andrew Young, you know, and I'm pretty sure y'all ATLians, y'all know about him, and uh, and George Foreman, because both of these guys, you know, uh, we'll start with George Foreman first, you know. And this is, I see, it, looking back in perspective now, is when, when Ali beat him in the Rumble in the Jungle, that's why Ali put those hands on him because he knew he was cooning. So he knew he had to get him right then and there before, you know, it was brought to the light, you know, to where we know he's a coon now. Because you don't sit there and, and speak up for this man who's disenfranchising your own people and, right. some, and speak against two uh, prominent athletes that are speaking up against uh, police brutality and the way this man is representing our country right. and his uh, supportive position on uh, white uh, supremacy and racism. So, uh, you know, I think I, I'll have to go with him. I'll put Andrew on the coon train next week, but right now we'll, we'll roll with George. And I'm mad at George. All those QVC commercials folks buying up that George Foreman grill and here he right. is. I mean, I was very, very disappointed when I saw him up there. You know, I think that yeah. George is still in that old good old boy phase in his life. 
Like, there's a reason why, while he's known, he's more known for his grills than he is for his athletics. And there's a reason oh, why. Oh, he was an athlete? Exactly. No. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a reason why Muhammad Ali surpassed him. And he even mentioned in that interview about them wanting to be like Ali. And it's like, that just proves you follow others. Right. Just by you just admitting that you follow others and you're following the wrong people, they don't care about you. Well, what were the comments that George Foreman made? Well, he was talking about when, oh, oh, you want me to go? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, he was just saying, like, when he fought in the uh, 1968 Olympics, how he, uh, you know, he was representing this red, white, and blue, and, you know, this is his country, and he's doing it for them, and, you know, and uh, I'm like, 1968 was probably the most uh, most turmoil-filled year in probably American history. You know, you had... Martin Luther King get assassinated, Malcolm X get assassinated, Bobby Kennedy, Kennedy get assassinated. You had the Democratic Convention, you know, when they had the riots and all this and that. The Vietnam War was still going very strong. You know, that's when LBJ decided he wasn't going to run for president. Right, right. But yet and still, you're not even speaking up for your people who are here suffering. And you only, your only thing is about this flag. And then he goes on to say that you know, he, he's so disappointed in, in Kevin Durant, which, you know, I have my own reasons against Kevin Durant being an Oklahoma City Thunder fan. And then Colin Kaepernick speaking out against Donald Trump. And then the, in the systemic racism that's going on in this country and police brutality. So when you have a person like that who's going to just diss his own people and take up for this man, I mean, you know, like I always tell y'all, these are people that are detrimental to our health and our well-being. And he'll, one of these days, he'll find out the Cooney would not protect you against white supremacy. Ask OJ. Sure, and won't, it will not. <laughs> he would have got burnt with one of them tiki OJ's torches had he been out OJ. there. I know. OJ's right. OJ. And he you know, right he'd have been out jail. there pushing those grills, and he got a brick put upside his head. You know what? <laughs> and called all kind of boys. Yep. Grill my meat that. on your own grill, boy. All right. right. <laughs> Let's move on over to there. this. Uh, over there. Yeah. Yes, in Boston. Go ahead. <laughs> the Secret Service. We saw this coming for a while. Right. Like they've been crying for help for a while. Essentially, well, it, it seems like the Secret Service are over. They've exceeded their federal limit in um, funding. Okay. Yes. And they have spent already a year's worth of protection on Trump, and it's only been half a year, and they're already over a year budget. So, this um, to the point they they can't even pay their agents for the overtime that they've already worked. Exactly, and which which is sad because as you know in the Secret Service, certain agents um, get paid certain different amount of salaries. But since Donald Trump has so many wives, I'm sorry, since he has so much, such a huge family, they have to protect each family member gets a different level of protection. And since Trump uh, is I guess allergic to the White House or something, all these trips and then his kids trips and then his you know, wife, I'm sorry, his daughter's trips. <laughs> I mean, they are running right. out of money. And it's so funny because they, they're going to already, by the end of 2017, they're already going to be using half the budget of next year. Right. So. Now, here, here's the double standard. Because I can recollect when Michelle and, uh, or excuse me, President Obama and our first lady, Michelle Obama, you know, the real people who should be still in the White House, I wish they could be. Right. They went on a date, like, in I think it went to like a New York play or something like a Broadway play or something like that. And I can remember conservatives losing their mind, like, you know, calling her Michelle and all this and that. Now, this guy goes to play his golf every week. Like, you know, he just has a nine to five and like, OK, see you. See y'all Monday. You know, flying down to Florida, flying, you know, here and there. And then his family, they're, they're taking their own personal trips. But the American people are not trying to hold them accountable like they tried to hold Michelle and Obama accountable. Right, exactly. And the kicker is, is that they continue to have Secret Service after they leave the White House. So for right. Right. That is true. his extended family does as well for X number of years. So, Well, his, his Secret Service would be in Leavenworth, hopefully, yeah. or <laughs> some, some federal prison. Or, or be following him back to Russia with his, you know. Right. Putin's house. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more thing before we have to go. Um, so there are more celebrities who were friends with Donald Trump in the past. And I tried to be very um, realistic about their relationships with them months ago. Because it's kind of like, 
if you have a coworker that you're cool with and they go and become president of the company and they just screw it up completely like you had that pre-existing relationship so you are conflicted between on the on like our individual level you're cool you're funny whatever right but then you're screwing the company up yes. so a lot of the celebrities have not come out and spoken up some have and so russell simmons recently did he did and it was a very very quick message he did and his uh, piece that he wrote he wrote a letter and they published it in the new york daily times and he was basically telling donald trump to wake the f up he said um you won't go down in history Um, If anything good, you'll go down in history as a great divider, the destroyer of the environment, and the embodiment of everything we as Americans have fought so hard to call ours. Um, The racist, bigoted movements you are feeding now are gaining power by your words, action, and refusal to hold these people accountable for the destruction. My thing is, okay, all that is true, but why now? You should have been speaking up on that during the rallies that he did before he even became president. It's like a lot of people are waiting till he crosses the line to say something. But to me, he crossed the line when he put in his bid for presidency. Exactly. And then with Russell being a black male of all things, like I kind of understand maybe the white women trickling in right now or the white men trickling in, but it's like you are a black male. Right. Since day one, you should have stood your ground. That's why I feel like, you know, Russell has a lot of um, real estate as well. Yes. He has that rush cards and he has banking institutions. So there's probably some type of relationship professionally going on between the two of them that made him not want to say anything until now. Yeah. And I I just don't get it. I, I can't co-sign that, sis, because you and I, we share 50% DNA. But you check me, so he needs to check his friend a little harder like you would check your brother. So I, I can't co-sign but see, that. They're, they're, not, they're not related, because if they were related, somebody would get an elbow to the forehead. Mm-hmm. But he's he, he still he's still hanging around with somebody who who's a uh, documented racist. Yeah. So, you yeah. know. We can get, he can keep his rush car and we'll just pull his black car. How about that? <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. A good one, DJ Spence. All right. So thank you, bro, for calling in. Could you tell everybody where they can find out more information about DJ Specs? Yes, you can find my booking information at djspecs.com. You can find me on Twitter at DJ Specs at OG Smooth and on Facebook at uh, ChristopherDaniels.com. All right, Christopher Daniels, love you, miss you. Love you too, sis. Miss you too, and I'll, I'll see you in a couple more months. Right. Uh, when y'all get this thrashing about them boy, even though I'm not watching the NFL, you know, so we got to ride with our brother Cap because he's out there. He's giving up his career for the advancement of our people against these uh, this police brutality and things like that. So support that brother for real. Yes, Colin K. K- Kaepernick. <laughs> it, no, Copernic. <laughs> Copernic. Co- Co- Colin? Colin? Which one is it? Jesus. All right, DJ <laughs> Specs, we'll check you next week. All right, peace. All right, guys, make sure you keep it here to the real with Rachel D with another mix from DJ Specs coming up. All right, guys, welcome back to the real with Rachel D. That was a mix by DJ Specs. And on the line, I believe we have the director, media director of Dragon Con, Dan Carroll. Hey, Dan. Hey, how are you doing, Rachel D? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, getting all the things ready for Dragon Con next week. I saw your Facebook. You have been all over the place today. Yes. I have, I have. I've been uh, running up and down Buckhead, run over to CBS 46 in the evening, and, uh, had a couple of out-of-state interviews last night. So oh, the wow. whole country's excited about Dragon Con. Oh, yes. Oh, awesome. That means you're doing your job. Hey, right? Yes. <laughs> In fact, the real with Rachel D came back specifically for this. I'm not going to lie. You were really, I was like, such nice people, such fun things. I said, guys, we enjoy the people that we meet, and we enjoy Dragon Con. We're all very low-key. Well, we were low-key um, nerds but now we're loud and proud and we love it oh yeah definitely. yeah <laughs> but you know the best thing about dragon con is anybody's welcome you like a little bit of star trek come on down you you like a lot of star trek come on down you want to wear a costume we got room for you you don't want to wear a costume that's fine just come and enjoy the show absolutely right so i'm a marvel fan so 
just want to put that out there. So that's uh, Star Wars, cool. I think I was like a black princess Leia with my little double buns last year. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, Marvel is my thing. But Dan, what can people expect from Dragon Con this year? Well, Dragon Con is growing, and this year we're expecting 82,000 people to come uh, to our hotels. And uh, we take up five host hotels down in Atlanta, the Hilton, the Sheridan, the Marriott, the Hilton, the Hyatt, oh, I almost said the Hilton twice, uh, and the Western Peachtree Plus. Uh, over in America Smart, we have gaming, and this year we're introducing eSports, which is like gaming that's competitive and oh, wow. professional and uh, it's going to be broadcast on Twitch, and then we've got another building at America's Mart where we have vending. We have, oh my gosh, 14 football fields of, of things that you can buy and wear and play with and uh, games and toys and you name it, it's going to be available for you there. And also we have a hundred comic artists over there talking about their comic book work, signing art, and Oh, uh, probably the big thing everybody's talking about is that if you can't make it to Dragon Con, you can join with a streaming membership and be able to watch DC TV with all the great panels, all the exciting activities, the contests, all that available for you wherever you are over the internet. Uh, uh -huh. So that's a big, big surprise. It's here to find out more about that, www.dragoncon.org. But I know a lot of people like to come to Dragon Con to see the celebrities, and this year we are not going to disappoint. Oh. Uh, we've got John Cusack, we've got Wallace Shawn, we've got Zach Levi, and a uh, thing that's causing a lot of a lot of conversation on the internet is we've got Alton Brown right here in Atlanta relaunching, uh, and and this is pretty exciting for me. He's relaunching uh, Good Eats, and he's going to be talking about how cooking is actually science. Oh, I love Alton Brown. Yeah, no, he, he's great. I, I got friends from New Jersey. They always go, hey, you live near Marietta. Have you ever been to this Harry's that he goes to all the time? I'm like, yes, I've been to Harry's a lot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he represents the city well. And, uh, you know, of course, we've got that great parade everybody loves uh, coming down Peachtree Street, 3,200 marchers. And uh, we're expecting crowds of 85,000. But you don't have to come to Dragon Con for that because going to be on the CW here in Atlanta uh, and it's going to be broadcast live in the morning September 2nd and then it's going to be prime time rebroadcast yeah I saw that I think that's very very awesome how many years have Dragon Con been up and running well this is our 31st Dragon Con and uh, it, it, to give you a perspective on the growth and the impact it's had on the city when we started we had 1700 total attendees and this year, we are looking at 2,500 volunteers helping put this show on smoothly and effortlessly. Wow, 31 years. Not to you know, age years. anybody, but I wasn't in existence when Dragon Con <laughs> <laughs> I oh. was around. Yeah, oh, well, I, uh, I, I, I actually was a young man with a head full of hair when it started. So. <laughs> and I do want to say, Dan, I'm glad the beard is back. Okay. Dan went through uh, a moment where he shaved the beard, and I'm glad it's back, right? Or those Whoa, are those yeah, it is. It's okay. back at big time. It was a it was a piece of bad advice I followed, <laughs> and uh, uh, no, it's back strong. Um, in fact, this year I'm going to be costuming for the first time. I've never costumed before. Awesome. Never wore a costume. Any spoilers? Uh, can you tell us? Of S yeah, I can. I can. If you if you if you got computers in front of you, go look up Star Wars Rex R E X, and I am costuming a character from Star Wars Rebel that looks so much like me that when the toy was announced before the show, before he was introduced on the Star Wars Rebel show, oh everybody God. sent me pictures of the toy asking if I had posed for it. <laughs> yeah, so I am. I am. Uh, I'm coming back. Come, come to Dragon Con. A leaner, a leaner media relations director. Um, the costume is going to be a professional quality costume for the folks at the 501st Legion, the people who love dressing up like stormtroopers and uh, raise money for charity. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. But speaking of charity, 
Uh, that's probably another important thing about DragonCon is that DragonCon is hitting a milestone with our blood drive. Uh, we expect sometime on Friday at DragonCon that we will draw uh, blood unit 25,000. 25,000 units of blood will be collected from the time we started collecting blood at DragonCon until now. And uh, we're going to give a special award to Mr. Henry, who is president of DragonCon, Pat Henry, uh, for uh, the way he has really gotten behind this Robert A. Highland blood drive every year. And also to the person who we identify as donating the 2,500th unit of blood. And because there's legalities involved in public health, we'll know exactly when that is. Uh, which surprised me, but yeah, it all has to be documented very well, so we're pretty excited about that. And also, the Georgia Special Olympics is our charity this year, and DragonCon Incorporate will match donations to our DragonCon charity drive up to $100,000. So if we raise $50,000, we'll, DragonCon will give another fifty. dollars If we raise $80,000, DragonCon will give 80000 If we raise $100,000 in our charity, DragonCon's going to match it with another $100,000. That's wow. awesome. Very, very awesome. So I did want to talk to you about, um, it's like an old story, but it kind of impacts the cons a little bit. Um, so you know about the former Power Ranger Jason David Frank situation that happened I think in a I think it was a Philadelphia um, Comic Con where uh -huh. somebody was going to attack him so because of that a lot of the Comic Cons are very strict about people bringing weapons or bringing props that looks like weapons is that what's going to happen this year at Dragon Con? Well this is really important we're, we're we always always are fierce about uh, our weapon peace bonding program and uh we're not going to stop people from from carrying um styrofoam guns or anything like that but what we're going to do is throughout dragon con you might have seen this happen if you, you were there last year throughout dragon con we have people checking the props as people come off escalators and we keep an eye out for whatever is going on and we have a strict peace bonding process where after the weapon's been inspected, if it's not appropriate for the convention, it's removed. But otherwise, the the weapons are wire tied so that they cannot leave the person's body. Uh -huh. And and that's an, that's an important way for us to allow people to continue to have their fun weapons, uh, their foam weapons, their costume weapons. But it's also a way to make sure nobody nobody is doing anything untoward, and that we're protecting the people there. Um, one of the one of the great examples. Uh, I actually had a conversation with a young man last year about this, who was a he was a police cadet who had come out of the military, and he actually praised our system for making sure things were authentic, and and that I'm sorry that authentic things were taken care of to make sure nobody had any confusion and this year above all years security is a concern for everybody and we have taken massive steps working with the APD working with the hotel security working with the GBI making sure that this will be the safest most inclusive most fun Dragon Con ever I actually work downtown on Peach Street, so last year I got a chance to see, you know, pick you out on my lunch hour and see the people dressing up. And it was just amazing how everybody just walk around the streets like in New York as if them in these costumes is just normal. You see like superheroes and like uh, Deadpool, which is my favorite, just walking around just normal everyday life. And it's super fun. So I hope that people understand it's not about, you know, a geek or anything bad like it is so fun you see how creative people are it's amazing no and, and and that's just it and we're all geeks now if, if you talk to most people about what movies they've seen this year i'm pretty sure guardians of the galaxy and wonder woman are high on everybody's list don't be and, mad at me but i haven't seen those movies yet. <laughs> what I why mean, have i was wedding planning but i plan on getting back and been watching very soon but no go so ahead what, so i'm gonna change the subject so what movies have you seen this year Oh my Did god. You say, oh, <laughs> you haven't seen Baby Driver? 
No, baby, baby driver. driver. Yeah, baby driver. Yeah, I've heard of I I recommend it because it was filmed at Dragon Con, not at Dragon Con where it was taking place, but it was filmed in our food court. Yeah. it's a lot of fun. And all around Atlanta. All right, you said what's it called again? Baby driver. Baby driver. Baby driver. I will look into that. B a b y baby. Yeah, I'm a mess, because normally I'm one of those people, Dan, when a Marvel movie comes out, I will pay... Oh, I know what I saw this year. Power Rangers. That's what yeah. we saw. There you go. I was in Power Rangers. That. And, and that's what everybody's going to see. Um, I myself have missed Power Rangers, but I didn't grow up in that era. I did grow up in the era, Silver Age of Marvel comics, so I love my Marvel movies. Yes. Plus, filmed here in Atlanta. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're filming now as well. Um, I, I thought that wrapped. Well, a, a couple, maybe like a week ago, because yeah. at my oh, location, good. Okay. they like to uh, book our, we have a very cool looking um, parking deck, so they've been calling sure. us to book that up to last week, so they might have wrapped, but I think they're still there you go. a little bit I, I, I was able to drive past when they turned Woodruff Park into Central Park. It was kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah, it was filled with new, fake New York City news vans, and it was filmed with um, New York taxis and, and hot dog vendors, and it, it was it was hilarious. And uh, they even put up railing like they have in Central Park. And but that's that's another thing about DragonCon is that you know so many of the customers that you see at DragonCon, a lot of them are getting jobs in film. Right. The makeup, I mean, everything. these people go way out. And, I mean, it's really, really, I mean, it's nice. It's better than those days you just throw on, you know, like the little uh, okay. K-Mart and cape. And, I mean, these are really interesting. It's a designs. competition. You know, I know last year Harley Quinn was an extremely popular one. And so it got to the point where you're really, like, judging people. I saw kind of a little standoff stare between a couple of Harley Quinns because, they put so much time and energy into their look to look as authentic as possible. Right. So people take this extremely serious, mm -hmm. but it's all they, for fun. They do it. It's all for fun. And for those who, <coughs> pardon me, for those who've never been, there's a fantastic area behind the Hilton Hotel between the Hilton and the office apartment complex with a set of stairs. And they fill those stairs staircases and they're very wide they're like 40 50 feet across and they fill those staircases up with customers of different types you'll see 200 300 sailor moons hanging out together and then across the way there's another set of stairs and you'll see a uh, hundred avengers um it's just amazing to behold and last year when they were doing the guardian of the galaxy um sean gunn the director i'm sorry sean gunn and his brother James Gunn came out. Uh, Sean Gunn is Rocket in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and also from Gilmore Girls. And that's well, it's one of the things that I love that they celebrate here at, at DragonCon. It's not just the nerdy stuff that you remember, but th they talk. People will talk about their other stuff. I, I remember years ago. You ever watched Star Trek? You know the character Q, who was always fighting with Picard. Yeah. Um, so the actor who played was actually at the Kent State Massacre and he 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 survived. There's, there's a fam very famous picture of of the Kent State Massacre of a young lady um, bending over the, a dead body and he was about 15 feet behind her when it happened. Oh, wow. When that photograph was taken and I remember a panel where he, he just talked for hours about the amount of time he... It, talk to Congress the amount of time um, he, he actually had to drop out of college for a semester because he was spending so much time in Washington um, with the federal with the Justice Department with the, you know the Pentagon everybody investigating talking to him so um, so you find the most interesting conversations at Dragon Con and you know we we as an organization have a, a very clear goal to make sure that Dragon Con is always a place where everybody feels welcome and uh you know gosh is you know and we haven't even talked about the fact that it goes 24 hours a day oh wow i didn't know that yeah dragon con is is a 24 hour a day four day a week party four days 
uh, during Labor Day weekend party. And, you know, during the daytime, it's all family friendly. And, you know, we have a lot of stuff for the kids, a lot of workshops for the kids. We have special tracks just dedicated to things like uh, shows that tweens like and, and, and crafts and activities for young folks. Uh, we have puppetry all day long. But then at night, it gets a little more. Um, people can cut loose a little bit more. The kids have gone home. Um, and it's this giant, massive party that, that fills up the Marriott Marquis. It fills up the Hyatt, the, all the hotels. And, and we, we have sanctioned parties going on, maybe five or six, all night long in every hotel. So it is a 24-hour event. Absolutely. Well, we're so excited for Dragon Con to return again this year. Um, Dan, can you tell everybody where they can find out more information about Dragon Con? Absolutely, Rachel. It is www.dragoncon.org or download the Dragon Con app for Android or for Apple. All right, Dan. It's always a pleasure. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to hear from you. I was so crushing on your Santa pictures that you posted during uh, Christmas time looking good. And well... I, I got to tell you, Rachel, I just lost 35 pounds. I'm trying to fi figure out whether I'm going to be able to be Santa this year or not. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a, a pudgy suit. But uh, thank you. Yeah, no, it was a uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and uh, you know, it, it's it's like at Dragon Con. You do something that's fun, but it's also good and brings people together. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dan Carroll, for calling in. And we will see you. Uh, it's next weekend, right? It is indeed next week and Labor Day weekend. It starts August 30, 30th, well, 31st. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Thank you so much again, Dan Carroll, for calling in. And, guys, you're listening to The Real with Rachel D. Make sure you keep it here. We have another mix by DJ Specs. All right, guys. Welcome back to The Real with Rachel D. I'm here with Miss BJ. Hey. And Patrick P. Money. What's up? Ooh, I totally spoke to somebody who's listening. Hey, hopefully I'm actually. to which it was trained, hitched the trailer to the back of his pickup truck and drove off. Um, and they are, I mean, everything happened on camera. It was right underneath the closed circuit television. They know his identity, they know what he looks like, they know what he drives. I don't know if I'm gonna say this on the What, what? So does that mean it was good? Or does that mean <laughs> you know, I mean, anything that will drive you to commit a crime, I don't know, the throes of passion drives people in different ways. But he did steal a $1,200 trailer hooked it to the back of his truck and took off. So what was it about the trailer that made him steal it? Maybe I missed that part. I, and I, you know, honestly, I don't know. But they did say he left his partner behind, so the person. So oh, then it wasn't good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but it was some, maybe he was more interested in the trailer. So basically, he used this person to get the trailer. Or, or maybe he was distracted. Maybe it was like a, I don't know, a John Deere or something. Maybe it was a top of the line Maserati trailer or a pickup truck. I mean, you know, who knows? For it, was, it was really, really interesting. Uh, everything was caught, though, on, like I said, on closed circuit television. So it was, it was extremely interesting. I don't, and then, guys, this just recently happened. Like I said, they were able to get all the information on this guy from closed circuit TV. Okay. So, 
So, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, just, I'm still focused on the fact that, you know, all this happened after. After, after yeah. A- after. And then he just picked up the trailer. Like I said, hitched it to the back of his pickup truck. And then he drove off. So is this like a trailer like you live in kind of trailer or no this is like a trailer that you carry equipment on oh okay. yeah like a lawn mowers things like that oh, he so maybe he had a couple it. lines to do the next morning you know, he's trying to start a small business that or maybe he needed you know to transport some family or some hogs maybe even a horse you know? <laughs> <laughs> i mean Look, i, I never appre- know i do appreciate the wishful thinking guys but yeah we're trying it. to keep him in high hopes over here all right so guys moving on um okay this is a moral thing. Is it a moral thing? Never mind. I'm just going to read the headliners. Johnson & Johnson loses a lawsuit, but they're ordered to pay $417 million to a woman who um, ended up getting ovarian cancer because of their baby powder. Yes, yes. The woman, her name is Eva Echeverria. She is dying of ovarian cancer, um, but she doesn't want people to feel sorry for her. She wants people, she wants that $417 million. Um, and she was just awarded it in a lawsuit against Johnson and Johnson. But what they have not told you is that there are several people <laughs> with lawsuits against the company, um, and more than a thousand people who are currently su- su- suing Johnson and Johnson. Uh, one Virginia woman was awarded one hundred and ten point five million dollars in May. Three other women received seventy two million dollars, seventy point one million dollars, and fifty five million dollars. They're saying not only is it Johnson & Johnson's baby powder, but many other personal care products in their line that include the ingredient known as talc, which um, it causes cancer um, and organ system toxicity. Did they? I mean, that's a lot of money. That's almost half a bit. That's over half a billion that they half paid off. A billion and they dollars. still haven't changed their formula? They're still, <laughs> Johnson & Johnson said they are still using the same formula and people are still using it. And the sad thing about it is now this has been out for the last two years. Then you know how you hear, you know, the people who say if your family member has did this, did that, contact them. It's really interesting because like I said, Johnson and Johnson's not changed their formula, but these lawsuits are still ongoing. They're even facing a few class action lawsuits. That's crazy. Well, for $417 million, I feel like you can buy yourself some new ovaries. You know, I'm so glad you said that because I was going to be like, um, so y'all want to hit up Walgreens before we go <laughs> right. home? So I don't know if now that the information is public that, you know, they're taking any new people for lawsuits. <laughs> but I mean. But I feel like I heard this before, though. I heard yeah. about that. So. And because it's not meant to, I mean, I don't know, but I, I, my curiosity is. How much baby powder was she using? And where? Well, well, clearly down there if it made its way to your ovaries. But Well, technically, it could be anywhere because it absorbs into your skin. She could have been throwing it under her armpits. Y'all yeah. better start using cornstarch. For what? For that's deodorant? What? You're so, that's so, that's so country. <laughs> corn that's starch? so grandma-ish. That's what it's supposed to. That's that what your grandma said? No. So you no, can walk in the kitchen, the reach over the Martha White flower, and grab the cornstarch. I think go. I read it on the internet. It's one of those late night, like, Google searches, Google dives. Wait, did you say your grandma don't talk to you? Huh? Is we it? don't talk about cornstarch. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's so interesting. I'm, I'm, the cornstarch. I mean, the lawsuit is well. <laughs> but as everyone knows, Johnson & Johnson is a multi-billion dollar company. So it's not like they're going to go broke. You can still get, you know, your fame products like that baby lotion. And side note, I do not get why grown women with no kids will come somewhere smelling like baby lotion. All the lotions out there and they smell like baby lotion. Well, I remember when I was in college, um, my roommate, the one I had to share a bathroom with, she there was always a bottle of baby oil in the shower and so i finally asked her about it she said she puts the baby oil like she lathers her her thing and puts the baby oil on it and it'll moisturize her skin which it does it's really really good so i got so i love the smell especially the lavender yeah that's different i, I can see that it's grown but there is nothing cute or babyish about some you know big grown woman coming in smelling like baby lotion I cannot stand it. <laughs> and then still be ashy, but you smell like a baby. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's cornstarch. <laughs> Maybe it's not ash. Maybe it's cornstarch. All right. So let's just move on to this story. This story is kind of sad, but fortunately it's working itself out, I believe. Um, 
Did you guys hear about the 11 year old girl? She's from the Bronx. Uh, she mm -hmm. suffered major burns on her face. Yes. And it's because her friend threw a pot of boiling hot water on her as a quote unquote prank. Yeah, it's some stupid hot water challenge. And what happened was it was during the sleepover the 11 year old girl was having in her mother's house. And um, the young lady named Jamon was at a friend's slumber party across the street when one of the other girls allegedly poured scalding wa water on her while she was sleeping. And the young lady said she just felt the boiled water pouring down her face and she jumped up yelling as hot as hot as burning. And she was rushed to the emergency room with third degree burns to her face, um, neck and shoulder area. Patrick was kind of smiling. I during see. That. Well, I'm well, sorry. When you say Jamon, all I think of is Michael Jackson. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm. Now, there's there's different versions of the story because I've seen interviews with the girl's mother. The girl's mother doesn't think this was a prank because she feels the girls from the slumber party have been bullying her daughter for a while. I did see that. That she th thinks they did this on purpose to hurt her, but they didn't expect it to go this far. So why would you allow your daughter to go somewhere to a sleepover if you knew that she was being bullied by this hello exactly no sense but at the same time she feels like the mother of the girl needs to be held responsible as well because it they took about an hour before alerting the mother the burn girl's mother and to take her to the hospital because yeah. they were trying to cover the tracks i agree so i definitely think that but at the same time you guys i get they're 11 but is it just is this generation getting dumber or is it kind of like that's just what 11 year olds do because I don't remember that I, I never like, no. boiled a pot of water and threw it on anybody no if I was, I was boiling hot water that was for some noodles right yeah I mean or that's about it or a hot dog you know. right or to you know dip my braids but it's never to throw <laughs> throw on a girl while she's sleeping because I mean you know when the water hot and you go to sip some tea you say oh it's hot it's gonna burn myself but you go pour it in somebody's face I really think it was deliberate well, you know that the girl who threw it, she tried to commit suicide. I think she tried to cut herself. Like, cut her wrist or something. Well, like that. what about a knife? Okay, yeah. 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 So, I'm kind of like, Ugh, I can't yeah. say I feel bad for you on that one. Because what you're doing, you're not cutting. I don't think you're cutting yourself for her. You're cutting yourself for you. Because yeah. you're going to be charged. They're trying yeah. to charge her. She was charge you twice, too, life. for trying to commit suicide. <laughs> Wait, that's a crime? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So what about that uh, teacher who just uh, shot himself at Lithia Springs High School, I think? I he didn't survived. hear about that. I'm not sure, but I know it's a crime to commit suicide. Yeah, I didn't hear, but that, hurt. that happened either earlier this week or well, last week. Who sues you? Can't you see yourself? I don't know. I don't know how that works. I never really understood why that was a crime. But that's interesting. Well, maybe it depends. Like this teacher I'm trying to tell you all about killed himself or shot himself didn't die at the school so maybe it could possibly be um sorry maybe it could possibly be that since he tried to commit suicide at the school that traumatizes people traumatizes students it's a lot of you know medical personnel that has to come that costs money and he brought a weapon on school grounds that is very true that's ridiculous but yeah, I don't know what's wrong with kids. They always got all these challenges. They got a cinnamon challenge, a hot pepper challenge. What happened to the go to school challenge? Learn how to read challenge. Graduate, get a job, you know, challenge. What happened just to like a whoopee cushion in somebody's chair or yeah, something like ooh. that? <laughs> oh, you've heard it. You know, right. Anything. But these kids come up with the dumbest thing. The set myself on fire challenge. The choking challenge. I mean, I do not get it. And it, But you know what? I'm not trying to even be funny, but this generation... They so sensitive, but at the same time, they hard-headed because I'm not trying to be funny. Since school got back in, I swear these kids think they got a bumper around their waist. They walk so slow when they get out the street. I mean, I'm not saying I will hit anyone's child. I might maybe bump them a bit, but... <laughs> But, That's, when, but when that stop sound pulls back into the school bus, all bets are off. Well, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just be waiting. I be making eye contact with that driver like, ooh, let me go, let me go. It's just they have these challenges, and they're done all under the guise of parents who aren't paying attention. I agree. I don't remember doing stuff like that. And I know my mom said that I was kind of a, not a different kid, but she said certain things she didn't have to worry about with me she said i was so disney obsessed i was so pop star obsessed that you know she didn't have the things she had to go through and look what rachel's looking at and stuff and it's true i just didn't need to be that kid my brother on the other hand was the one that had the playboys and had this little it was like this magazine of gory pictures from movies and you'd always watch horror movies and sounds hardcore like an rap. In the therapy journal <laughs> does he, does i know he need to talk to somebody about this he probably has shoot <laughs> 
Anyways, guys, you're listening to The Real with Rachel D. Again, go on social media. Show us some love and support on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and some say SoundCloud. We're not on SoundCloud. <laughs> and Twitter. Uh, coming up, we have a mix by DJ Jack Nice. Make sure you keep it here. All right, guys, welcome back to The Real with Rachel D. That was actually a mix by DJ Specs. I never give DJ Jack Nice any love. I'm sorry, bro. We'll get to you. We promise we will. <laughs> All right, so that's P Money. What's up? And Miss BJ had to step out real quick, but she'll be right She's in back. timeout. She's in timeout. Yeah, yeah, we had to put her face in the corner. <laughs> All right, so let's talk real quick, uh, P Money, about Dragon Con. Um, this is what our third, almost fourth year. It attending. is. It is. My, well, were you with me the first year? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. See how he forgets the good <laughs> stuff he forgets now let me mess up somewhere i'm totally kidding um at the time we both worked in the same uh we worked at a public broadcasting station and we were able to go because we were following around one of our colleagues <clears throat> who was doing some type of segment and after that we just kind of loved it yeah and uh, i think playing dress up and pretending has always been something in our lives so this kind of made us feel really at home I agree. And I meant to thank Dan Carroll um, while he was on air for um, an experience I had last um, Dragon Con. He was in part um, responsible for because I dressed up as, um, this sounds really nerdy. He would have got it though. But um, I dressed up as Powder Toast Man and the creator of um, um, Ren and Stimpy was doing a panel there. So I got to meet the creator of Ren and Stimpy in my Powder Toast Man costume. And thank him for contributing to my dark and warped sense of humor <laughs> so oh man we gotta tell him that we'll make sure to let him know that i didn't know, i did see the picture i did and he was so funny you guys he, patrick's costumes are so elaborate mine i'm not gonna lie and it could have been because i've been really broke the past couple years with employment i was you know i was employed but lord knows they don't want to pay you nothing so my costumes were normally very dark because i just wear all black and then throw some ears on or something like that but this year i think i'm gonna dress up a little bit i'm kind of taking p money's league and see what he has for us and also i think miss bj is gonna join this year oh, yes wait ha have you thought about what you did you think you can act right now oh yeah you were in timeout we didn't exactly tell you to come back from timeout <laughs> she just uh, well i'm sorry Jeez. i'm back and i know what i would like to dress up as what's up my favorite favorite costume of all a broke ex-college student. But you do that every day. But yeah, or people of Walmart. That's pretty much every other day. Well, dang on. Okay, how about <laughs> I will not wear my bonnet out in public? How about that? That's only a work day. <laughs> <laughs> That's her. I, honestly, I don't know. There's so much I want to do. But based on my um, budget, I, I honestly, I'm going to have to really think about it. Did you even go last year? No. You know, I think it would be good since you've never really officially went this year. Mm -hmm. Just come to go and check out people's costumes, go to some of the panels, like mm -hmm. absorb it as an onlooker. And then next year, I can get, come dress yeah. up. Okay, I might do that then. It was tons of fun. And we love Dan Carroll. When we first interviewed him last year, I was very nervous. Yeah. Because, I mean, when somebody says, 80,000 almost 100,000 people come to an event that they help to promote every single year that's intimidating like people know you yeah and but he's one of the most kindest guys I mean he was Santa Claus for last year yeah. and I mean, he's so awesome he and he's very motivational yeah he, you hear him and he makes you want to get out chase your dream and you know be Harlequin or dress up like the pink Power Ranger <laughs> Yes, like one of these <laughs> days I will get to. I had to do Aisha. Y'all remember from Power Ranger yeah. Movie? This is Aisha hair. Remember the hair it style is. she wore? Yeah. yeah. I could probably do Aisha. Fun fact, though, about Dragon Con that I just found out over the weekend is that it is actually, and I don't even know if this is true, but I'm going to go with it. Um, <laughs> um, I was told that it was actually named after one of the hotels i can't remember was the hilton or the marriott because when you look down from the top it looks like the inside of a rib cage like the dragon's cave ribs. Ooh, that's oh, pretty cool i think that's a marriott yeah oh okay. that's interesting have you guys are you guys got yes game of thrones yes yes how many denarius do you think are gonna pop up with little dragons oh that's they're gonna have to have like a whole <laughs> 
whole floor for so, the whole um, wing for them. John Snow. Yeah. I don't yeah. watch Game of Thrones. I'm sorry, I didn't. I, a, yeah. yeah. A, what is that? Did you know. hear that, Patrick? She's in timeout now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if I had time, there's so much stuff I need to binge watch. Game of Thrones, um, Power. Mm-hmm. What's that other one where the guy was the meth addict? Uh, it's a old. It's it's not even playing. Holiday Heart. No, he was a me- not a meth addict, but a meth cell, a meth so- meth dealer. Oh, you're talking about. Oh, Breaking oh, Bad. Yeah, Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. Well, you know, all there, those I never saw. Have you ever gotten a True Blood? No, because there is going to be a guy. I forgot his last name. Alejandro. I forgot his first name. He's going to be a Dragon Con. He played um, Lafayette's boyfriend in True True Blood. Oh yeah, you know yeah. the actor who played um, Lafayette passed away. He did, unfortunately. Yes, it was. Let me tell you, I love that. Scene. I don't even watch True Blood. Mm-hmm. Is that where it's on? Yeah. But that one scene that he was cooking, and the guys were talking about an uh, A's burger A's or something burger. like that. Yeah. Austin show your me waitress. That. Yes. <laughs> Like I'd never seen any episode, but I always loved that one. Cause I'm like, see, I think that hate would disappear a little bit if the, if that happens sometimes. Yeah, and I don't believe he even had a coat or Pepsi. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I always say with bullies, I'm like, what needs to happen is that one kid you're bullying just need to ride up and beat the mess out of every, just clear the room one good time, and then it would they would be friends. Exactly. That's actually um, funny fact. Um, that's what happened with Bruce Lee. When Bruce Lee was growing up, he had a bully that kind of encouraged him to become the fighter that he was. And that bully ended up actually being his best friend later in life. So. It happens. You just sometimes got to beat them down and to raise them up. I think well, most of my friends in like elementary and middle school started as enemies to me. Like We had a fight <laughs> before we became friends. Like. <laughs> but were they bullies, though? No, we just didn't like each other, just mutually. <laughs> yeah. And then we had to handle that, and then we <laughs> became friends. Yeah. I get that a lot. A lot of my friends tend to tell me that. Like Katie, she's honest about it. She was like, she always starts by saying this, I love you, but I didn't like you when we first met. She was like, the other girls didn't like you, so I was like, I don't like her either. <laughs> and me and Katie almost threw hands one day. She wouldn't have won that one. But now we love each other. See? just be like I guess you just gotta get the crazy out you know and then you start to step back I'm like okay I understand why you the way you are I don't like you being that way with me but I get where you're coming from and mm-hmm. I like you anyways guys we're just doing a quick recap on Dragon Con I'm super excited that Miss BJ will be able to join this oh, year yes. Miss BJ you have to hold it down because I can only stay until Friday because I have my husband's aunt's surprise blah, birthday blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who was that Patrick <laughs> Uh, my husband. husband. Well, I will be bringing my husband <laughs> to uh, to Dragon Con with me, whether he wants to or not. He's coming. He should. But yeah, I'm going on my honeymoon. Mm-hmm. Um, we're leaving out next Sunday, so I won't be able to enjoy it as much as y'all. But that's why you have to hold it down. I got you. The costumes are hilarious. Last year, Prince passed away last year, right? So there was, a, yes. there was a lot of cute Prince costumes. Mm-hmm. There was one, he just stole my heart. I saw the photos and I think I did see him. The purple Power Ranger. Yeah. He had the oh, purple yeah, head yeah. thing on and then the Prince guitar. The Prince guitar. I and he had the it, yeah. little blouse and everything. Perfect. I think that was really cute. And then the other guy with the pant walking around with the pancakes. He was in Prince character. He would <laughs> not really talk to you. But no, Dragon Con, you guys, if you have not checked it out, you have no idea what you're missing. Before you even spend the money, just come downtown walk downtown maybe on a friday or a saturday morning and just look at it it's, it's intense it's <coughs> insane but we love it and the real rachel d will be there representing yeah i think that miss bj if you're not too tired on friday you should try to drop by just so we all three can be together for a little bit before i have to head out so we'll see <laughs> Oh, dang. That was just, she just curved me so bad. What? I'm sorry. She didn't even look at me when she did that laugh. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, you're listening to The Real with Rachel D. <laughs> See, that's what you get. God don't Karma. like ugly. Wow. That's what you get. You're listening to The Real with Rachel D. You guys, make sure you keep it here. We have a mix by DJ Jack Nice and more show for you coming up. Just keep it here. to the real with rachel d that was another great mix by dj jack nice guys we are back in the studio with miss rachel d yo patrick p money go get him <laughs> yo hey me your girl miss bj 
All right, <laughs> Miss BJ. So, um, I'm actually very interested in finding out who you have nominated for the Petty Betty Awards. All right, guys. So, tonight we have um, three people. Let's go with um, Aniko Hart, who is the new wife of Kevin Hart. She was nominated for her shady post towards Tori Hart on Instagram. Our, our next runner-up is Tori Hart for returning the shade back to its original owner, Aniko Hart, for what she um, said regarding, you know, her and Kevin's relationship. And our third runner-up, guys, is Twitter, the Merriam-Webster's Twitter account, um, they went in hard. They called out a couple, well, a week ago, Trump had posted a, a tweet that said, Our great country has been divided for decades. Sometimes you need protests in order to heal, and we will heal and be stronger than ever. However, he didn't spell heal correctly. Instead of H-E-A-L, he spelled it H-E-E-L. And then he tried to repost it twice, and it was still wrong. So Merriam-Webster's Dictionary called out Trump and helped him out with the correct spelling and pronunciation and usage of the word heal. So those are our Petty Betty runner up, runners up. All right, P Money, who do you nominate? Um, I'll go with the, uh, nominate somebody or, or vote. Or who do you vote? Sorry. Um, I'll go with the Webster. Yeah. You know, I have to say, I, while um, grammar police do bug me, because sometimes people make mistakes when it comes to people like Donald Trump get them get them and get them again (laughs) so I definitely I nominate Webster as well all right well I do happen to have here the envelope if Patrick could just you know take the honor get my letter opener (laughs) don't forget your glasses this time oh yeah yeah I'm put my glasses on It's a big envelope, Patrick. I think mm-hmm. it gets bigger each week. <laughs> um, it looks like, guys, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary is the winner. Oh, my God. All right. So who is here to accept their honor? We're going to let Patrick take it. Yeah, Webster couldn't be here today to accept the honor, but they left this um, memo. It says, Petty, um, of little or trivial impo- or little importance, trivial, <laughs> Or of secondary or lesser importance, rank or scale, minor. Synonyms include <laughs> trifling, minor, small, unimportant, or insignificant. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> all right. Excellent. Thank How you. How better to accept an award, Miriam Webster's Dictionary, than with a petty, <laughs> you know, <Definition>. explanation? <laughs> That to me makes like Patrick kind of like the the um, honorary petty. Hey, for the day. yes. All right, Miss BJ, what is your hashtag of the week? All right, guys. So, well, dang, don't break it. The, don't drop your award again, guys. <laughs> please, you just got it. I was just putting it in the box essential. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my hashtag of the week, y'all, is butter. Okay. So y'all know butter. It's a delicious spread. You can use it on toast, biscuits, and croissants. But uh, I'm just going to use it in a sentence. Don't listen to me, Miriam, if you're, if you're listening. So here it is. Shantae is a very lovely young lady, but her sister, she ain't no good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. What is that word when you can use two, like one word for two different things? Is it, is it, is it, no, uh, I don't know. It's not synonym. Homonym. Homonym? Yeah. No, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Good use so, of that. Butter. Even though that was ghetto. It was butter. Good. Huh? Nothing. No, what I do? I said y'all didn't tell me my elbows were Oh. <laughs> oh, you know, you can use some butter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say, uh, Patrick, but nobody's here to see it. Nobody can see it. <laughs> All right. So hashtag butter. And the Petty Betty Award went to Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. All right, guys. Make sure you um, keep it here to the road with Rachel D. We're going to start doing more social media. Like once I get back from the honeymoon and once I can kind of clear my head a little bit, we're going to do more and more and more. What is wrong? You have to go to the bathroom? No, I'm just so caught up in emotion from, you know, the award. Do not pass gas in here. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm, I'm going to go check on this award in the corner. Oh, yeah. okay. Please send this off for me, BJ. Let me get your posted. <laughs> oh, my God, you guys. It's insane. All right. So, no, we're going to be doing more social media things. And for us, too. Is that Jimi Hendrix? 
All right, my attention span. Way to be, yeah, way to be distracted. There's a Jimmy Hendrix stamp just right in front of me. It is. All right, sorry. To complete what I was saying, yes, we're going to start doing more social media things, including to allow people to nominate their own Teddy Betty nominees. So make sure you go on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter to find out, you know, who we have for the week and also to give you, give us your suggestions. Coming up, we have another mix by DJ Jack Nice. All right, all right, guys. We are back. The Real with Rachel D. And that was another great mix by DJ Jack Nice. We are in the studio with Miss Rachel D herself. Yeah, baby. Patrick Dragon Con Award costume winner. Few <laughs> 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 money. <laughs> Yay. I'm still very impressed, guys. Um, last year, Patrick went as uh, Mr. Dr. Mr. Toastman. Oh, Powder Toast Man. Powder Toast, Toast Man. Man. Oh, my God. He looked so awesome. I'll it probably was re- so nostalgic. resurrect that this year. It was so nostalgic. How come you never won as Prince? Because I've already won that costume, like, to three or four events. But it's still, still great, though. Mm-hmm. But no, Powder Toast Man was very nostalgic. Oh, Who it, were you the yes. year before? Oh, the Phantasm from Batman. Oh. And I'll probably wear that again this year. You were? Yeah, you didn't go that year. You weren't with me that year. But I do remember you did Static Shock. Yeah, that was the year before that. Yeah. What are you talking about, like in the dryer? <laughs> yeah, like when we both decided to put our wigs in the dryer and oh, hope oh for the best. Oh my gosh. <laughs> do not do that. Please, please watch YouTube or something. Don't ruin great hair for no reason. <coughs> and you know, it's so sad. We both went into it with confidence that yeah. it was going to work out. I'll put it on low. <laughs> well, I tried to straighten the curly wig one time. <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I tried to do it per the YouTube's um, suggestion, and that wasn't working fast enough. So then I tried to just use like a straightener. That oh no! It, you know. What's the YouTube suggestion? You um, know, like the the little YouTube how they say how to how to detangle your hair. Yeah, I don't know. So you were supposed to like boil hot water and then like pour it on top of the wig to straighten it. And now that's a hot water challenge. Yeah, right there. I've done, have y'all ever washed your synthetic hair with, um, uh, not detergent, but fabric softener? No. They said if you have like curly, it's supposed to help. You know how at the very ends of it, it gets very dry and like stuck together. They say it's supposed Matic. to, mm-hmm. yeah, it's supposed to renew it. So I did that a couple of times. And all you do is walk around smelling like downy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay. And I think some, some of the curly hair it kind of fixed, but yeah. Sorry. But now we're in a place where, you know, we can actually buy another one. At that yeah. time, you remember that, that time in your life? I know, Pat, you had dreads for a while, but you held on to them with. You, I mean, for dear life. Jesus. Like, you, you hung it up. You somebody we it. know who has that ponytail. <laughs> she holding on to dear you, life. No matter what we have gone through, there <laughs> are some people out there with a struggle tail. I can't even call it the pony anymore. That thing is Elma's glue by now. <laughs> I'm talking about that that ponytail done walked across a bridge at Selma Child. This particular ponytail we're talking about, when I first saw it, I had a little respect for it. Because, you know, sometimes you got to wear your wigs for a while or you just kind of like shake them out. You put them somewhere so that the shine is gone and it looks more natural. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I know it's a wig because I know weaves, but um, okay, I see what you're doing. And then time went on. And it was the same ponytail. And then years yeah. have passed. Like SpongeBob seven years later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's the lesson, you guys. No struggle ponytails. Love yourself more. Know when to let it go. Thank you. Love yourself more. All right. I sound congested as a mess, don't Yes, you, you do. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. All right. But that's fine because it's actually around the time for the end of our show, Aww. you guys. I know, I know, and I love doing this show. We're going to do bigger, 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 better things. It's going to be huge in my Donald Trump world. Uh, I was going to say, oh my very God. Huge. Did, y'all got, did you guys see him looking into the sun during the eclipse? Yes. Staring with no glasses on. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then even the reporter was like, don't look. Don't He's look, like, Donald, oh. don't look. So special. Stupid. That's y'all's president. I ain't vote for Good him. Lord. All right, guys, you're listening to The Real with Rachel D. Oh, I do have an event. Since we are talking about Dragon Con, there is a um, screening of the season finale of Game of Thrones at the Buckhead Theater, I believe, this Sunday. I think it's free. So, really? Yeah. Okay. So, say that again, Pat. Buckhead Theater. I should have pulled it up before I started speaking, but um, the Buckhead Theater 
um, this Sunday for the season finale of the Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. All right. Will Jon Snow ride a dragon? We'll know then. Yay. All right, guys. And also, make sure you guys keep out, keep a lookout for more Dragon Con things. I know they have little parties going on at, like, the Joystick and other things like that that are pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And, like uh, Dan Carroll said, to go on www.dragoncon.com for more information. And I think that there is a media um, something on Facebook. Just go to the road with Rachel D and we'll post more information about that. But we're super excited because Dragon Con is something we enjoy. We hope that you guys go out just downtown. Check it out. You'll love it. <clears throat> Thank you guys for listening. Uh, P Money and Miss BJ. Yeah. Yep. Pleasure as always, guys. Yes, make yes. sure you join us again next week. Same time, same place here at the road with Rachel D on 1420 AM. We're going to leave you guys with a mix from DJ Jack Knives and we will check y'all next week.